March 1st, now at 9.30 at night, I've started work on uh, the new converter for my test case. This is uh, another TTL to RS-232 converter. This one has, uh, actually has, ooh, I'll lose my light if I do that. Actually has pins for five, you can see there on the left side, five volts and ground. So this thing actually can be powered off the Arduino. Uh, and again, this is just more testing, so I can actually write code and test the code out. But at least if I, it's powered and it works properly, I should be able to get the communications going. 22, 28 hours, uh, and I've been playing with my new converter, and it doesn't seem to be working. I even broke out another Arduino board and rewired it and tried jumping it, and <sighs> everything I seem to be doing to it doesn't seem to work. Um, the only, the only thing I can think of that's left is maybe flipping uh, those two wires there, but it, it doesn't make any sense. It should be working. It's not. I don't really have any good solutions at this point. Frustration. Well, uh, unfortunately, that's about as far as it goes tonight. Uh, I put the, the other TTL converter back in right there and tried to get it to work again and uh, no such luck. Without, I think, adding the control lines that won't have actually any power in that converter. And plus, it's just really not the way to go. So I broke out my prototype board that I bought a long time ago and I uh, tacked on my connectors so I, I now have at least that put together and... I do have a uh, a line driver chip here. Uh, it's not a Max 232, and it's one that I kind of had lying around. Um, I'm just more comfortable with the Max 232 chips. But anywho, uh, my plan is to replace those jumper wires there that that kind of do their thing with wires not necessarily here, but m maybe underneath on the underside here so it looks really nice and sharp but I'd like to have the converter chip and maybe a, and a couple of headers up here that uh, or maybe over here that uh, the analog pins here connect to so when that's connected to the pots there and there that the connection is you know something that can plug in and you know plug in and disconnect as well as I want the connection off of this guy here to also be pluggable and unpluggable. So the whole thing will be mounted on the underside of this can here, probably in this area here, which will put it like uh, in kind of an orientation like here-ish to the, to the rest of the system. And, uh, and there's more room there than it looks like because so, it's, you know, it's like that. So I'll end up with the stack of them right here and and be able to kind of open the I want to be able to open the case up, disconnect all the motors and the reading and all of that jazz, and then be able to lift that away. And I was actually thinking of using this DB15 here because this guy actually has a nice cutout right here for the network and everything. You know, passing network through a DB15 seems a little shitty is the best way I would put that but it, it's not unacceptable so I could run you know the the network through the, through that and then have a cable that kind of comes out of this DB15 and loops itself around plugging into this connection here so that should button everything up nicely but uh, for right now the project is going to be getting this thing to do converting and line driving properly and the problem I guess there is, I don't, you know, not an electronics guy too much, so uh, there's a chance I could screw it up, and then I wouldn't know what I screwed it up. That's why I'm a lot more comfortable with the Max 232 chips, so I'm almost inclined to set that aside, place the order on Mauser, and just, you know, get that in, because they're almost dumb easy to work with, where this one needs little driver, or sorry, little resistors in line with it, and more finicky than the max 232 so that's my plan I guess I better go order some parts so okay it's the next day and 
Uh, I did a little work and I tried to find the parts I want online uh, for the converter. Uh, I, and I actually uh, went to Bowser and picked up all the parts I want and it comes to a bill of about $20. But well, then I started thinking, I'm going, I can't be the first person on earth who's ever wanted to make a TTL DARS 232 converter. And so I went over to my, one of my favorite sites I've ever been to, Deal Extreme, which has a tremendous amount of just junk. <laughs> Anything and everything, it's kind of there. And I found little tiny RS-232 uh, to TTL converters. So, hooray! But to keep the ball rolling while I get those on order... I've modified my converter thingy that didn't work, and now I have the connected from the data port here. You can barely see. There we go. Get a little closer. This data port here ends right here into my TTL converter, and then this goes over into right there. Now, what I've done is I've added this little red wire, which is connected to the 5-volt line over there, and essentially... <laughs> turned a port-powered TTL to RS-232 converter into a powered TTL to RS-232 converter. Cool. So in those attempts and whatnot, I now have uh, right here in this window, this is this is the server itself uh, here. This is the, the USB serial port tap on the Arduino. And now what I'm going to do is send... Uh, I'm going to send the command to pull the zoom all the way back. Now, is, this is manual, of course, but what this does is allows me to... What this actually will do is I've created a bypass, so it's going to come in through the Ethernet, through the Ethernet cable, zip, and then pass through the entire processor and then be handed out. This is kind of the first steps that I do to always kind of manage this kind of thing. So, okay, here we go. We'll send, we'll send the command from that window, so it should just zoom back. There it goes. The one thing I've noticed uh, about this whole thing, unfortunately, uh, other than that little, maybe you can't see it in the camera, uh, there's a little mark. No, can't even see it. Uh, it looks like there's a couple dead pixels in this camera, which is unfortunate, but also, here, let's see if we can hear it. Um, I'll send the command for, uh, for coming back and see if this picks up. Okay, I'll send it forward. What what I was hearing earlier was that the camera sounded like it was grinding pepper almost. I don't know if that's normal operation, but there's a couple of clicks in there. I don't know if it, you could hear it, but I don't know if the lens is in good shape. Maybe it needs to be cleaned. I don't know. So I've continued to play with it, and now I've, I've implemented uh, zoom controls as well as like zoom... Uh, amount of zoom control so you can give it like an integer. I want to zoom a lot or zoom a little. Uh, except now I'm having a weird kind of hex to decimal conversion. Uh, check it out. This is, this is looking that way and the way the, the command is structured, you can see here, I tell the, command, the camera to zoom tight by a factor of 1 and it, the range is 0 to 255. Except 0 through I think it's 64, I can't quite remember, is in decimal, and then the rest is in hacks, which causes a little bit of a glitch, because that's not exactly how hex works, you can't just count, so, so yeah, I end up with weird things like this, I'm going to index one at a time to zoom in, i got to reconnect here, you can see, I'm going to zoom just one, and it jumped a massive amount, I, it should have made this little baby step forward, but it jumped significantly. And I'll just do another couple little baby steps here. And it's it's jumping these massive amounts until it's going to hit where it changes from. You can see the count here of the internal command. It's, uh, you can see it's 8, 9, 10. So it's going up by just these tiny, tiny bits. And now it hits what? 17 and it zooms back out so I have some kind of a weird decimal hex conversions happening there and in fact you can see uh, my previous runs uh, up here where it's counting you know 45, 6, 7, 9, A1, B, C, those make sense from a hex perspective of you know trans, trans, uh, 
converting from a decimal to or integer into a hex number but it works kind of funny because in the book and you can see actually right here uh, when it talks about or in this spec that I found it's saying okay zoom wide wide or telephoto there's the command header and then it says okay hex 00 to hex 255 well it don't work that way something is kind of odd there so I'm gonna have to play around with that for a little bit to see if I can figure out what it actually should be which is kind of interesting well uh, I guess I got it now I finally have all of the elements in there uh, as you can maybe you can see I don't know if you can see it's kinda of focused in on there uh, on this there's a CD thing over there and I can step the focus so that it goes super duper fuzzy and then I could reprogram it to come back the other way. So I've got zoom, I've got focus, uh, I could implement the iris, I guess that's one thing that would be left. Uh, and I need to clean up some code because I still have, you know, in the command structure, ugh, in the command window here you can see I'm telling the camera to, uh, to focus far and intervals of one, but then you can see there's some feedback stuff coming in here. So there's some information that's coming back in the commands that don't necessar doesn't necessarily need to be there. So the next step here is getting all of this jazz kind of concealed and put back together into one at least prototype chunk, uh, uh, which means you know putting a couple holes in, do some solder work and whatnot. It shouldn't be too much work to actually get it done. I just have to do it. So. That's where I sit right now, and I think it's pretty much all I want to do for tonight, other than maybe clean up a few commands and whatnot. But as far as I'm concerned, I think the software is where it needs to be. Maybe a little bit more debugging to make sure the motor controls are right. That's it for tonight.